The U.S. Geologic Survey's National Geologic Map Database lets you search for and access a massive collection of geologic maps from across the United States. Normal GIS-based mapping systems like Missouri's Geostrat let you overlay various map-based data onto a base map. But traditional paper geologic maps like this one from southwest Missouri can provide a whole different set of information, from locally relevant cross-sections and unit descriptions to representative outcrop photos, and even geophysical data. What's cool about the National Geologic Map database is that it uses modern technology to provide access to these traditional paper maps. Back in the last century, when I was young, exploring geologic maps like this meant having to personally visit one of the few locations that maintained collections of physical maps, like a university library or state agency. Then, you had to physically search through actual cabinets of maps to find the ones you wanted. If you even knew they existed in the first place! But the National Geologic Map Database acts as a sort of nationwide digital map cabinet that anyone can access. So today on Ozark Outsider, we'll show you how to search for and access historic and modern geologic maps through this platform. And we'll use some specific examples of cool maps to demonstrate how you can use them to learn more about local geology and even plan interesting trips. The National Geologic Map Database actually supports a variety of different mapping servers. For example, TopoView takes you to a database of historical and modern topographic maps, while clicking the National Geology link takes you to a unified geologic map where symbology has been standardized across the country. But today, we're focusing on the Map View link that hosts a collection of individual print-style geologic maps. There's a Map View here, and a sidebar with search option and results over on the left. The results bar will update itself with relevant listings as you pan the Map View, or as you select or enter a specific location of interest. You can apply various filters like Bedrock versus Surficial Maps, and Publication Scale or sort results by factors like publication year. Clicking a given result loads a preview image, and clicking that loads a separate page with full information on that map. You can often then load a high-quality digital version of the map that you can zoom in on and pan around. Let's explore how these features help us find and use interesting maps. These tabs let you select which scale maps you want to access. At a broad scale of 1 to 500,000, mapping is pretty comprehensive. But if we look for highly detailed 1 to 24,000 scale maps, you can see that coverage is a lot spottier. Let's go back to 1 to 500,000 for now. Using this scale lets us quickly locate unified geologic maps of Missouri and Arkansas. But if we try Oklahoma, we don't see an equivalent map. Let's try switching to 1 to 250,000. Sure enough, the most recent statewide Oklahoma map is listed at that scale. So if you can't find something, always consider the scale you're searching in. If you choose all scales, you may get an overwhelming amount of results, but what you're looking for is less likely to get filtered out. This database also contains references to maps that aren't available online. For example, there is a 1 to 500,000 scale map of Oklahoma, but it's from 1926 and it can't be viewed on this platform. Let's say you were planning a visit to Missouri's popular Merrimack State Park. Entering Merrimack State Park in the search bar and sorting for all bedrock maps at a local 1 to 24,000 scale quickly turns up a map of the relevant quadrangle. Loading the full map reveals a lot of detail, even including the park's trail network, providing some useful geologic context when planning a hike. But the map itself is just part of the product. Over here we have a detailed local stratigraphic column with written descriptions of the units, and down here there's a cross-section providing more insight into local geology. This map is a quite recent product of the Missouri Geologic Survey, 
Several years ago, a geologic map played a key role in a week-long float trip we took along Arkansas's Buffalo National River. Finding the map in question lets us demonstrate more browsing options. Notice how you can use this opacity slider to fade out the geologic maps while you're trying to navigate, and how these buttons at lower left let you toggle the base maps between photographic, topographic, and shaded relief views. First, since we want another locally detailed map, we'll again filter to 1 to 24,000 bedrock maps, which only cover a portion of this region. Notice how mousing over each listing brings up a green highlight of its coverage area. Right now, we want this one. This map was produced in 2011 by what was then the Arkansas Geologic Survey, since renamed the Arkansas Office of the State Geologist. Maps like this were certainly a useful reference for the various bedrock units forming the Riverside Bluffs, but this one also led us to a really cool geologic site. In just a few places atop isolated knobs are mapped tiny pockets of this QTO2 unit. What are these? Well, the map's useful unit descriptions define these as very old terrace deposits. Essentially, these are remnants of gravel bars left over from when a much younger Buffalo River hadn't cut all the way down to its modern level, but instead was flowing through a valley whose base was up at the level of these now isolated knobs. So when we hiked up the top of one of these knobs, and sure enough found ourselves standing on coarse river gravel over 200 feet above the modern river, it was just so cool to realize that we were actually standing on an ancient river terrace long since abandoned by the river below. And that experience really added worthwhile context to our long float through the modern Buffalo River Valley. Just how old those terraces are is a fascinating question for another day. Sometimes you need to look at more than one map to really understand the geology. Let's say you're interested in Cave Hollow Park in Warrensburg, Missouri, like these members of the Missouri Geologic Survey on a 2024 field trip hosted by the Association of Missouri Geologists you might be wondering about the geologic setting of this massive sandstone rock shelter. Searching out Warrensburg, and zooming in, we find that it's actually bisected by the boundary of two different maps. Cave Hollow Park is right here on the boundary, so let's look at the left-hand map first. Cave Hollow Park is hosted within this dark green bedrock unit running along the edge of the map labeled PPWM. The unit descriptions tell us this is a Pennsylvanian age sandstone filling an old river channel. That might be hard to understand, and the cross section here barely covers this unit. So let's look at the map immediately adjoining this to the east. Zooming in again, Cave Hollow Park is just off the map to the west, but this cross section includes more of our featured unit and has a clearer view of how this sandstone fills an old channel that cuts down into the surrounding bedrock. But these local views still don't give you the whole picture, so let's zoom out to a regional view. Here, the collection of 1 to 24,000 maps clearly shows how this sandstone unit fills a linear trend running south from Lexington through Warrensburg, the trace of that ancient river. And if we switch over to a 1 to 500,000 statewide map, it's pretty clear that this channel sandstone, mapped here in brown, actually stretches for about 50 miles between Lexington and Calhoun. That's pretty cool. Sometimes, multiple interesting maps are contained within the same product. This really broad-scale publication from the Illinois State Geologic Survey starts out as a simple topographic model of four states, including Missouri. But notice that this is actually just the first of 12 maps within this publication, displaying different geologic information about the chosen region including bedrock topography, surficial geology, shaded contour maps of various bedrock units, gravitational anomalies, magnetic anomalies, faults and folds, and even earthquake epicenters. Maps like this are also a great reminder that geology doesn't stop at state boundaries. The geologic maps in this database cover both modern and historic work. For example, here in Missouri's St. Francis Mountains near Ironton, we have a detailed map of Precambrian volcanic rocks from 2020. 
with the sort of extensive supporting detail found so often in Missouri Geologic Survey maps. Yet overlapping with it is this 1978 map, hand-drawn and shaded with colored pencil, with essentially no additional information. And if you revert to all scales and use the year tab to sort regional maps in reverse, you find geologic maps going all the way back to 1896, in part a testament to the long history of mining in this area. At professional events around the region, we've enjoyed meeting a number of people who are actively working on new maps, and they're great folks. Their jobs are challenging, but beneficial to society in so many ways. To do the best job, mappers need access to private property. A good reminder of this is the insets shown on some maps, marking the locations of physical observations and other data sources. So if you get a request for mapper access to your privately owned land, or if you encounter a mapper on public lands, please treat them with respect and give them your support. Did you know there were impact craters in Missouri? We've got one more cool geologic map to show you, but while we're on the subject of supporting geologists, we'd like to thank viewers that have offered us financial support through Kofi, where you can leave a one-time tip or start a monthly subscription. We're self-employed and are working to build this channel into a resource for residents and visitors alike who value our Ozark region or just like learning about geology. Liking, commenting, and sharing helps too. Your support has a lasting impact. Speaking of which, let's go explore a real Missouri impact crater. The Decaturville structure is actually one of several circular structural features in Missouri interpreted as meteorite impact craters. And this 1 to 7,000 geologic map from 1979 really brings it to life. The basic map clearly shows the concentric rings formed by bedrock layers that get older toward the crater's center. But the real fun is in the supplementary page, which includes all sorts of detailed diagrams and cross-sections showing the complex bedrock deformation that resulted from this impact. You can even see some of this deformation in a local road cut. With the National Geologic Map Database at our fingertips, every day is Geologic Map Day. Do you have a favorite geologic map? Let us know in the comments below.